Odds and sods kind of day on the van build today. Got the Universal Van Pimps curtains to put up. They're quite cool. We've got a discount code for you on them too. See my fancy suede headliner? Well, that's also going to be going on part of the sliding door. See, we've got one grey panel there, one grey panel there, and there's a panel that's under there. There should be a grey panel on there, but there wasn't when we actually got the van. So that's just the insulation at the minute. So what we're going to do, the headliner is going to go on that piece just there, not that piece, because that's probably going to get a bit of battering, and we don't want to put that in a situation where it's likely to get used and abused far too much it's also going to go on a piece of wood that we need to make to go up there along with carpeting the rest of the door underneath the quilt see the metal framework i've got a little piece of wood to fasten to that so that the bulkhead can fasten to that who knows we may even get a chance to uh, start the electrics today all i know is there's not that much room to work in this van between all the tools that i'm using at the moment i've got all like my electrical bits and bobs kicking around all the spray glue that i've used i can't believe to carpet this van inside to do the roof and the other side have a guess how many tins of spray glue are used on this whole van if you want to know the actual answer don't need to fast forward 22 so far it's a big van but first job involves a flat blade screwdriver solely because vw have got these clips just here and if you have a look that little notch just up there in theory this is going to make me look stupid probably you pull that up just like that and you can see you've got a bit of a gap and then it's just a case of grab it and pull it apparently maybe i've not pulled it out far enough i've pulled these out all before but this time oh there we go come out a bit more then and then that should in theory just pull out like that they're quite ingenious clips if you've not seen them before because they go in like that and then when that pushes in it flares that out which means it attaches to the inside of the metal there we go poof i've just said to myself i need to put these in a safe place because i'm gonna need them again i need to find an extra two from somewhere as well because there's two missing on this one you can guarantee that safe place that I put this amongst all this chaos and the mess, including my Trellino composting toilet, they're going to get lost. So I really need to be careful on where I put them. Yeah, look at how dirty that is. So I've got to clean the whole metal work. I've got that panel off, which is just there. But again, how did I get a footprint on the piece of plastic that was there? I'll have no idea. But that's the reason I've carpeted the top and the bottom. Because if I do totally destroy the bottom, I can easily take off just the bottom to replace it with this carpet. That's also one of the reasons why I've gone for such a generic colored carpet. I can easily get hold of it from no matter where, anywhere I can pick up the exact same color carpet. Squirtle, woo! Rubber, dubber, 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 rubber. Get the metal work done as well. Yeah. Spray, 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 spray. I'll tell you one big tip that I've learned on this van build. Because I am trying to do things a bit more high end. It's amazing how, do you know when you like cutting the four way stretch or the ceiling material or anything? It's amazing how much a sharp blade adds. I've been, do you know how many packets of these I've been through? There's 12 in one of these packets. I've been through two with this whole conversion so far. That's the sides, the door, everything. Or am I just buying cheap blades? They were from B&M. And it just looks like that. Just nice and easy. I've cut that panel out just there, ready for us to fabric this little panel just here. So when this is fabric with the same fabric that's up here, it'll just sit on there nicely. But now it's this job. This is the Van Pimps. Again, we've got a 5% discount code uh, for anything on Van Pimps. If you don't know who they are, they do a lot of the stylish stuff for your camper van, along with all the stuff you need to actually convert your camper van. I'll leave all the links in the website down in the description down below, and I'll pin it to the top comment. And it's Indie Vanna Jones 5 for 5% off. In this box is the 70 centimeter um, universal curtains. So we've got a rail that sits down on the bottom. We've got a rail that sits on the top. So they're always nice and tight. This is a 70 centimeter drop because this is, I think this was 64 centimeters. They secure to the sides. So they're always going to be open and they're always going to be secure to the sides. So when you pull them shut, they shut in the middle. I've gone down the lines of blinds and other style of curtains and it's just too much hassle. If you have normal curtains attached to the top, they end up flapping around, they get caught in the sliding door and stuff like that. This keeps them neat and tidy while still looking stylish. Hey, this is cool, I've got some freebies, let me show you. So they come like this. So there is one set of curtains. You've got your two rails, you've got all your fixings, you've got your curtains, you've got some more fixings. Absolutely perfect. Now I ordered two, one for each side. So there's those bits. And then obviously you've got all the recyclable wrapping. What's that piece of paper down there? Ah, yes. 
Van Pimp's sticker, we'll find a place for that. In this, look at this, but it's not just a cup. I opened the cup and it got some bits inside. Oh, that's quite a thick cup actually. I've got, woo, Van Pimp's key ring and <laughs> a Van Pimp's bottle opener. Let's clean it off just there nicely. Boom, perfect. I'm well chuffed with that. Plus, I even stuck me 24 hour surveillance for my new cameras that are up there. I'm proper procrastinating now reading through the catalogue. Look, that's what I've got just there. Let's see, that's what they're supposed to look like when they're done. But I'm now starting to look at the side bars, the side steps, the front splitters. They even do windows, all your universal side windows. I originally wanted to do that, but it's a pain with the uh, su support brochure brackets and all the, yeah it's just a pain on this one your max fans all your little all the tools you need to be able to do it i mean look at it oh i love the look of that van that'll look nice in like a midnight but i'm procrastinating so much if you want to see what the special offers are just screenshot that and then boom you can have a look into that qr code or if you do like you're doing your qr code things you can screenshot that and have a look at the actual page like i say the links are down in the description down below they're called van pimps now they sent me a pdf through email of the fitting instructions of this these are the universal rails and you can see they're slightly different that curved edge that edge just there with the extra little bit on it that faces inwards to the van so the inside edge it goes down like that however this is a little bit too big it says in the instructions you can put it down and then use a rubber mallet to create the corners i don't particularly fancy doing that so i've just got a dremel i'm just going to measure the flat and a little bit of a curve on each side and then get it cut to the right size get it screwed down with the screw holes just there next step it comes with these cool little end caps you need to put them in one side so that you can slide the curtains down the other side that's the bottom rail fitted again like i said you could have it curve up the side a bit however this curves so sharply i don't want to risk anything sort of catching it or anything then the top rail that's secured in again straight through the top drill two and a half mil hole and it just screws straight in with the original screws that come with it the curtains themselves are blackout one side of the curtains has poppers on it so that you can run it all the way down fit poppers onto the other side the poppers do come with it to secure it to that side they also come with tie backs fitted onto them they clip into the rails with these little clips just here and they just simply go up push straight into the rail slide along again level it up go up push it into the rail dead simple again push up into the rail dead simple it's literally as simple as that do the top do the bottom slide it down i have a feeling this is going to be one of those jobs where it's going to be very satisfying very quickly and it's really going to start making the place feel really homely and there is the first one done i really like it i can see why they advise you to do the curve it's just my curves are really violent curve so i couldn't really do it but that's them open and then you can always just unclip them from there the reason it bows in like that is because i've got this tie on so that's just a popper and it's a tie back for the curtain and then it's just a case of look at how nicely that goes shut then on the same on the other side and that is the curtains closed i'm well chuffed with them it really does make it quite homely i'm well chuffed yeah I like that. All in all, it took me around about an hour to do that one. Now I'm gonna move over to the sliding door. Huh, the strange cat's back. I don't know whose cat it is, but it's back. Every time I'm working in the van, that cat always seems to come around. The passenger side window is a lot different compared to the driver's side window. And that's because the rails are exactly the same size on that one. However, on the passenger side, we have got a kink in the actual window just there. So I've had to do the bottom one shorter, but as you can tell, it fits in perfectly fine. Next problem is over this side. And I don't exactly know how to overcome this one, apart from just take the easy option out. You can see the pops are just there. Now they're the ones that secure to the side wall and the curtain secures to that perfectly fine, but it's right on the handle. I can't screw it into there because that'll go straight through to the window. And I can screw to that top one, that's not an issue. But this one is the whole handle. That's right. They definitely make it feel a lot more homely inside. Problem is, I'm running out of jobs to do before I can get the van down to Lee at Van's Adventures so that I can get my furniture. Problem is, I've got to get the van fixed before I can make that journey. Now for that piece. We've cut off a piece of material, turned it over. We've got the actual panel itself. We're gonna cover that in spray glue, line it up so that it's perfectly level on the pattern that's on the material. Get it down, get it stuck, figure it out. Because the first time I'm ever doing a high-end build and 
the majority of it is just figure it out. Then what I'm thinking is, if I trim the foam off to about there, the whole way up, and then just seal the outside suede fabric around onto itself, that won't be so thick and I'll be able to still get the same pins through. So far, so good. The foam's come off really, really nicely. Oh, hey, there you go. How cool does that look? That looks absolutely amazing. We've got another section going down there, maybe on the back doors too. Now let's move over to the electrics, or more formally, the start of the electrics. We've got two 200 amp hour batteries. We've got the Victron DC to DC charger, the, the uh, Victron MPPT solar charge control unit. We've got the mains charger. We've got the electric, we've got everything to all fit in under the bed somewhere. Now, because the driver's side of the van is only gonna have an virtually empty shower unit and a single bed that's hardly going to get used that side of the van's got no weight on it so that's the side of the van we're going to be doing the electrics on try and balance out the van throughout the whole build we just get less tire wear and stuff so that's why all the electrics are coming out the wall here that's all the first fix electrics so we've got to build something to house all the electrics in with the wheel wow just there it makes everything a little bit tight we've also got the bed frame that comes down so far we've got the wheel while in the way and we've got the bracket for the door in the way the biggest concern for me at the minute is battery placement where can i put the batteries they're too long to go along there they fit just nicely snug into there but they do stick out a little bit but i can build that as a hard shelf for something else to sit on top i can't put them over there and it may just be me overthinking but the shower unit is going to be going there the shower is going to be coming from behind the back of the bulkhead just here i don't want any sort of water to go onto the batteries all the cables are insulated and they're all going to be water sealed and stuff like that but the batteries are a different story 400 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate battery mixed with water doesn't go well let's just start making a panel to go in there to start with now this panel is not going to be perfect for the sole purpose i haven't got a piece of wood big enough all the nine mil ply that i saved from the actual build just isn't long enough but i do have one option I got this from Ikea. You can see just there, look, it only cost me a fiver. It was out of the waste wood sort of area. Now that piece isn't wide enough. Like, like it's not tall enough to go floor to ceiling behind the battery, so it's gonna start above the batteries. I'm gonna have to curve over that, but I can do the full length. I've got an idea, I've got an idea. Just sort of, just see how this, let's see how this turns out. So that's that piece done. We've got the hole there for that bracket because that comes into the van and goes out the back. And it, we've got to sit it off the wall quite a bit, a good few inches to be able to have wires. So we can have like the DC to DC charger, but then the wires go out behind the back of it. I have got an awful, awful lot of stuff to fit onto that tiny piece of wood. So I'm going to carpet it first so that when I screw it down, I can literally just screw it down. Actually, is that the best idea? Because I've got loads of holes to drill into it for loads of cables to come through and probably jigsaw a few of them out. So it's probably best to actually line it all up first. I kind of feel like I'm missing something. I'm not 100% sure. So hopefully explaining this to you might rejog my memory. We've got three isolation points just there. Now that's from the battery to the buzz bar will isolate. From the solar, the power coming in, before it gets to the buzz bar will isolate. From the DC to DC charger, before it gets into the buzz bar will isolate that way if there is an issue on that side of things we can easily just both done that's on the back door side of things so it's easily accessible granted easy to knock it as well to turn it off but i'd rather have that there as a safety rather than anything else same with the 12 volt fuse box that's there near the back door so it's easy easy to access if we think there's a problem we can easily access that we've got the two buzz bars positive and negative we have got the renergy smart shunt that's on the negative side of the buzz bar we've got the blue smart charger from victron now that's for if we're on electric hookup we've got just a standard electric hookup cable which goes to a few uh, rcds all built in one we're never on campsites so when we are we just pull that out clip that and then that can just plug straight into there over here we have got our 12 volt our dc to dc charger so that charges the leisure batteries up from the alternator on the van down here our 150 a smart charger that's for the solar power the solar system and over there a renergy 3000 watt inverter remembering this whole van's going to be gasless so 3000 watts is perfect for what we need we just need to make sure the cable sizing is correct 
but I can't get rid of that itch that I've forgot something and I can't remember what it is. We are going to be running off the inverter to an RCD, but that's going to be on the headboard, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. We've got the electric hookup RCD built in already. That I'll show that another time because I have no idea where I put that. Like I say, we're never on campsites, so we never really need to use it. And this whole system should, in theory, allow us to go completely off-grid for as long as possible. This is literally how simple I'm going. You can see all the black lines? Well, I've got to cut those out. They're just roughly drawn. I'll cut them out and a lot nicer. So a cable will come in there, go into there, but then go straight over to there. But then we still have options of cables coming out and going out there. So you're not really going to see too much cable on show. Stuff like this plug just here is constantly going to be plugged into the electric hookup so that when we are on hookup, it's going to charge the battery because that's connected to the Blue Smart battery charger. The electric hookup is going to be sat on top of the batteries because the batteries come up to best part of about here. So the electric hookup um, wires, they're all going to be sat up there. So this is going to be threaded through the big hole that's underneath it. So we're not even going to be able to see the actual plug wires for that. Same for the Renogy 3000 watt inverter. We've got a big hole underneath it to pass the plug through. That's going to be plugged into the electric hookup too. I think that's it. Let's go cut out all these holes if me battery lasts on me electric drill and then get this piece of panel carpeted. That's actually coming out way better than I planned. I'm in the process now of turn the panel over and gluing it over, but only by about that much. And then I'll run a blade down it and cut it. But check it out, I literally only just got enough to cover this one panel. <laughs> that was a good order because I ordered one patch of that four-way stretch carpet, the smoke color, and that done the both sides of the van, the back doors and that piece, and I've only just starting to run out you watch it won't be long before she turns around and says oh we could do with some carpet to carpet this little section and i'm like oh we've run out now how cool does that look we've put all the holes through for all the wires to get through it's all been glued down it looks absolutely amazing but that's still done for this episode solely because the next episode we're going to start wiring the van and that's all before the furniture goes in because while the van's still broken i still can't get down to get the furniture to be able to start that Tune in next time, we're going to start wiring the van. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new around here, please subscribe. Peace.